John Kite, the vice president of the Cow Creek Groundwater Conservation District, is recognized as one of the country's leading authorities on rainwater harvest. He has a system which has supplied all of his family's water needs for years, even through periods of severe drought. Let's have him show us his system and talk a little bit about it. When we moved up here um, back in 2001, I looked at drilling a well, having one drilled, and it was like $26,000. We put this system in, we did it ourselves for about 14.5, which means you're way ahead. But the other thing is, the water out here is very hard. It's got sulfur and iron in it, which smells, so you'd have to treat it. With rainwater, you get pristine water. It doesn't have the chemicals in it. It's not hard, it's very soft water. The Trinity Aquifer that we're in up here is a weak aquifer. We're in a priority groundwater management area, which means that within 25 years in 1990, you're likely to experience water shortages, which we're doing. And as the population keeps growing, we don't have the water to support it. With a rainwater system, you become the manager. You design the system, the draft of record conditions, and then you manage it, and you will always have water. The wells will go dry, but you'll be set, you'll be set up fine. One of the most important parts of, of a good rainwater system and having the quality, the pristine water, is to get rid of organics. And with this type of gutter, which is a leaf lock and it's similar to a leaf guard, but it gets rid of the leaves and crickets and other debris that you don't want in your storage system because if it's in the storage system, it degradates your water where you, you get yellow or brown water with smells and all. So this is one of the first steps, important steps, is to get rid of the organics out of your storage system. Originally what I used to screen the water was as it come down the downspout, I had this screen here. But still, even though this is only eighth of an inch screen, stuff was still getting through here like oak blooms and real fine particles and stuff. So, I mean, it worked, but what the new system is, it works a whole lot better. And again, to get this pristine water, you've got to keep the organics out of there. And this worked great, but the other works better. Okay, to further ensure that you have the quality water and to make sure that you don't have organics in it, the next thing I do is in my first flush tanks, I go through a 300 micron sock. And what this does is anything that might get through the gutters, which is just a lot of times just a small handful of real fine particles, it catches it in here. So that when the water leaves here and goes into the storage tanks, the only thing going in there might be a little dust. But you've gotten rid of all the organics. And then after a big rain, I'll come out here and let it dry and just dump a little bit of stuff out. So. That's, that's the second step you have in, in guaranteeing that you have good, clean water. When the rainfall stops, you want your feed lines to all be drained. And you'll see on the first flush tank, there's a valve that once it stops raining, you drain the first flush tanks. And then these valves here drain the lines that are feeding the first flush tank. Uh, again, this is something that's real important that you need to do to have the quality water that you're after. Once the water goes through the gutters to the first flush system and organics are screened out, then it comes down, it's kept in the cisterns. And right now, this is what we started out with, six 5,000 gallon polycore cisterns. From the storage tanks, the cisterns, we bring the water into the pump house, it goes through a booster pump into the pressure tank. From the pressure tank, it goes into the lines. This bottom line, is separated, it is the yard water. And I've got an element there, but I've never put a filter, and you can notice it's still real clean because the water isn't dirty. So that, that's the yard water there. Then the house water comes up and goes through first a five micron pleated filter and a five micron charcoal filter, and then it goes through the ultraviolet. And that's the last thing that it goes through before it gets into the house. This is house water. And this gets rid of the bacteria. I would recommend everyone has meters to get some idea of how much water you're using 
are you conserving water? And then, of course, on the conservation end of it, everything in the house needs to be low flow, whether it's your appliances or your laboratory or your shower or your toilets, everything needs to be low flow. Uh, last year, I think we averaged 44 gallons a day for two of us. So that's 22 gallons a person. Now, a lot of people say, well, you can't use that little amount of water. Well, yeah, if everything's low flow, you don't waste water. You just, you know, you're, you've got a conservation line. But a properly designed rainwater system will take you through drought to breaker conditions, of which we did a couple of years ago, and we only used half our water. It does rain during a drought, some. And with a large collection surface area, you collect a lot of water right quick. And that fills your tanks up. And again, it's like a bank balance that you put in and you use it between the rains. And the water is so clean, it, it, is, it makes city water and well water look contaminated. It, it's good. It's crystalline, pure water. Can't beat that. <laughs>